Honestly, analog horror isn't something I always find myself enjoying. I think it started as a super creative idea branching from projects like Local 58, but I felt people took a lot of the wrong inspirations from that. I recall perhaps a year ago it wasn't uncommon to be easily dunk on the genre by criticizing its excessive use of VHS filters, jump scares, poorly edited faces, and tendency to stick to emergency broadcasts. What started as a genre meant to take advantage of the poor picture and sound quality of analog media, i.e. VHS tapes, sort of turned into a crutch. Combined with a low skill floor to make analog horror, basically anyone can present cryptic nonsense obscured by ugly filters with some text saying, You are not alone. I have the key. And some kind of JPEG monstrosity on screen. I mean, even I've done it before. I don't say this to mock anyone who likes the genre or go after anyone creating it, because I've seen series that can effectively use the aesthetic for what it's trying to convey but I feel the need to justify why I don't personally enjoy the genre. Basically, anyone with a video editor can make a piece of analog horror, just wave warp the screen and steal a tape sound effect from the internet, and you're good to go. Horror genre already tends to receive a lot of lazy products shambling in its skin to begin with, so it's a shame you must sift through different video series to find any one of quality. And when you do, it's quite the feeding frenzy. The demand for well-produced video series is at an all-time high, so people are kind of desperate to submit anything. I admire how anyone can throw their two cents into the genre and get 20 cents back, but this leads to a lot of people sort of farting out something half-baked and hoping for instant success because they've seen teenagers do the same thing. If you look high and low, you will find series that piques your interest eventually, and for me, so much of my attention towards the genre comes down to the story it presents. Storytelling is something I am extremely passionate about, and the internet's shown me well enough you don't have to be limited to text to communicate it. There are several analog horror series that primarily focus on storytelling, but there's one I haven't seen covered much, which is shocking considering how well done it is. It's absolutely criminal how people haven't been singing its praises more. It's a series that mixes live action, multimedia, and a classic television series that's still ongoing today, South Park. Dear viewers, I present to you the South Park Analog Horror Series called... South Park Analog Horror Series, I don't think there's a proper name given to it. This series is created by one Beyond Birth on YouTube. I highly recommend you check out his work and channel after you finish this video. I'm just the messenger talking about a cool series, kind of like a less successful Canadian B-Tech Wendigoon. I'm going to assume you know what South Park is, because if you don't, where have you been? Does Gen Alpha still watch South Park? What is this series about? Well, I'm here to explain. I'll be playing each episode in order by a created playlist from BB, which is what I'll be calling the creator from now on, in sequential order, and then explaining after each episode is done. I'll trim some of the fat because I'd rather you use this video as a jumping off point to watch the original series rather than just featuring everything unedited here. Links of course will be provided in the description. I hate long intros, so let's just jump into it. Before he went, he just said, Where's Stan?
A videotape playing the season 5 episode, Kenny Dies, is interrupted by a warning that the tape is somehow corrupted. The sequence of Stan mourning Kenny's death, because Kenny tends to die frequently, but in this episode, he was put to rest for good. Or, for good and for the season, at least. is made a lot more somber with the grayscale effects and music. Stan blames himself for Kenny's passing and can't take the stress of the situation and decided to take drastic measures, putting it lightly. What can we dissect from this first video? We learn that around the fifth season of South Park, the show decided to take a much more darker and drastic turn. Stan is no longer with the main cast and presumably joins Kenny in death. But there's an extra narrative happening on top, the videotape. The episode has been greatly modified, cutting out most of the content and changing what little was left over with their new insidious ending. These tapes become exponentially more important as soon as the very next upload, titled... The camera work allows to see that someone is recording themselves watching another modified tape. Kyle, Cartman, and Butters are arguing who is braver by doming themselves in the head, as you do. And Butters calls Cartman's bluff. Cartman presumably follows through with the dare, and we get another shocking depiction of the aftermath. Starkly different from how Stan was portrayed in the previous upload. What we can gather from his VHS tapes to depict a much more graphic episode, as well as alter the continuity of the show.
We see that instead of a tape, we're now getting live broadcasts of these edited episodes over Comedy Central's channel, which implies that it's a much more coordinated individual or group distributing these episodes through any means possible. The strange edits begin right away with Kenny coming back to life, as he tends to do in South Park proper, but this time, we get something of a dialogue scene. Kenny can't be understand the show because of his hood, so the text on screen is likely another character speaking to him. They ask a lot of invasive and personal questions like, how did you find peace and we can fix you? Cut to Kenny's disfigured face with the text, you're, well you're, fixed. Implying that whoever Kenny is talking to was responsible for this mutilation. Comedy Central gets a hold of their signal once more, but is also hijacked again. Kenny, seemingly alive again, tosses and turns in bed, before the phrase, this isn't real appears in the episode ends. This has all been incredibly eye-opening for a couple reasons. This episode has been altered more than any before it. Kenny's unique status in South Park as someone who dies and comes back frequently is called into question by him being shown in both states frequently. Though, I'm unsure if him sleeping at the end is meant to signify that he's recovered from his skeletal form, or if that was a dream, or if him lying in the bed is the false narrative. The text does imply that something kind of false narrative is going on, either taken literally as South Park isn't reality, or the altered events in the show aren't happening and this show's regular episode programming is still the canonical through line. A lot of complicated narratives happen at once. W what is this, Blaze Blue? Check out my Blaze Blue video if you haven't seen that. Listen, Bill, nobody killed anybody. Someone died, it happens all the time. But life goes on, it always does, until it doesn't. <laughs> but you know that, don't you? A scene from the Kubrick classic, Eyes Wide Shut, could imply a lot of things right out of the gate. The movie is about the secret elite society based around sex and drugs and controlling the lower classes, which could come up into play later. But for now, this movie is interrupted by an emergency Channel 7 news public service announcement. We find out that the series takes place in 1998. The broadcast explains that several altered South Park episodes have found themselves on television typically striking around midnight. The signal seems to cut to another altered episode. Curiously, all four main boys seem to be alive again. Cartman is telling a tall tale about... <sighs> Scuzzlebutt. Yeah. When the scene cuts and the text, you are nothing, is repeated on screen. A corpse-like figure is shown, but its identity is unknown. It could either be the Scuzzlebutt Cartman was talking about, or an image the unknown person or group threw in deliberately to spook unsuspecting watchers during the hijacking. The idea that these altered episodes were made solely to spook people is something I'll come back to. We have another upload to look at.
Park, Wednesday night at 10. Ha, ha, ha.
Another scene from Eyes Wide Shut, this time Tom Cruise's character finding one of the sex cult members' masks on his bed, showing that his home and family aren't safe from their perversion and watchful eye. The metaphor is becoming clearer. Someone, or something, is watching. Either watching the town of South Park, or watching the people watching these strange episodes. Cut to a video of Cartman imitating some 2000s celebrity while the rest of the school laughs at him, which makes him quite angry. They will all suffer, his inner monologue says. Cut to a sleeping Butters. A gruesome looking Cartman appears over his bed and presumably kills him. Cut to a medical report from St. John's Hospital. I'm getting ahead of myself, but it would be funny if it's the St. John is of St. John's in Newfoundland. Very weird for the setting to be in Canada. The hospital's medical report states that over the course of six days, over 100 children have been rushed inside for insomnia and night terrors, which are like nightmares but extremely severe and dangerous to anyone around them. Some cases have been so severe that children have ended up injured because of it. The hospital tried to connect these seemingly unconnected cases by having the recovering children draw what was inside their dreams when they could sleep. Many of the pictures were innocent, but some start to resemble the ink figure seen in some previous uploads. Another cut, and we're seeing pictures of a typical suburb. A parent is telling their child to go to bed, only to find that a limbless torso that was once their child. The police are called to the scene. Observant viewers will know just how much these parallel with how Butters died at Cartman's hand which implies something supremely dark. The hospital broadcast trains us to think these sinister South Park episodes being distributed both by tape and broadcast are able to somehow influence people who watch them, either by giving them night terrors or somehow emulating the acts we see on screen. But that leads to a dire question. Who tore this child apart? Never thought I'd say that. Leave a like for that one. If the corpse is symbolically linked to Butters, then who was Cartman linked to? A lot of these questions will be answered in the next upload. The tape seems to belong to the Department of Justice, given that their branding is all over it. 
The story of the previous episode is expanded upon. Adam Ford is the name of our recently deceased. Police investigation of the scene nets them Adam's camcorder, which is promptly played. Adam is seen recording himself watching the previous upload's altered episode. When the power to his room is cut after it ends, we hear someone else has entered the room by their ghoulish laughter. Without any question, the remains are Adam's. The final statement confirms that the show is somehow capable of altering or even affecting reality, enough to get people killed. The title of this video is named after the incident. Local authorities have issued a civil danger warning due to the following counties. South Park County, St. John's County, Robinson County, and Long Road County. Local authorities advise that you turn off your television set and not watch IT again until further notice. Kyle gets a flash of a nightmarish vision of himself before he awakes. He thinks about how the rest of his friends are dead, which adds some much needed continuity to South Park. It also confirms that Kenny is dead for any doubters. Kyle says is next, and lo and behold, he is. A civil danger warning in the style of an emergency weather warning is making the rounds to several different counties, among them being St. John's and South Park County? As in the show location? There are reasons to suspect both, so I'm a little confused on the language here. Either it's referring to the in-universe South Park, or somewhere we're near St. John's, also named South Park. Whatever info they wanted to give is cut out by another hijacking, this time directly addressed to the viewers. We send our messages through the domain. We are not one, but multiple. And you will all suffer at the hands of our doings. There is no escape. We learn that it is a group of like-minded people, or presumably people, who intentionally use carefully manipulated episodes of South Park distributed through VHS tapes and sometimes television signals when they're able to hijack them. Their goal is to cause as much damage to anyone who views these episodes as possible, though their motive for doing so is unknown if there even is one. Choosing South Park specifically might seem strange, but there is a reason for this. Even when the show was first starting out, it was popular with adults and children alike. Because of its coarse language and sometimes graphic content, it was aimed at an older audience which naturally attracted children trying to fit in. How they're able to hurt people is something still left up in the air. The tapes are able to affect people on a mental level, likely due to some kind of sublingual programming featured inside, which would explain the nightmares and insomnia 
but I'm still curious on how Adam died. Call me crazy, but I don't think it's possible to remove your arms and head as one person. So whatever was laughing in his room he recorded was clearly there in some capacity, either as one of the members of the organization, or some kind of monster like the ones the children in the hospital drew up for its debate. Though if they wanted to seamlessly capture as many as people as possible to hurt, they could have just chosen Spongebob. Who's next is a little too short to analyze. It's just another hijacking from the group taunting viewers with which character will suffer a horrible fate next. And we seem to get our answer right away with the next, and as the time of recording, final video. Comedy Central has outright stopped airing South Park because of the incidents, and I assume that means the production of the show itself would have been severely halted, if not outright cancelled. The warning broadcast is taken over, as you would suspect. We cut to Ike, Kyle's younger brother. Ike warns about the starry state of the town and reckons that with the deaths of his brother and his three friends, things will never be the same. His sleep is disturbed by Kyle, or whatever calls itself Kyle now, 
who catches up to Ike and subjects him to the same horrific fate. The CIA is able to regain control and pleads for anyone affected by the broadcast to contact authorities and to stop watching their televisions. And that's where things leave as of now. With all these episodes under our belts, what can we say about the grand narrative at play? I've already explained much of the organization's activities and methods, but there's something I didn't quite touch on before. The supernatural element. There is clearly something unnatural happening, both in the town of South Park and the counties under the broadcast's effects. People seem to be almost possessed when they die in South Park, with a goal to spread it amongst the people of the victims once knew. Kyle attacking Ike and Cartman attacking Butters, who was previously mocking Cartman for being afraid to play Russian Roulette. Lucky me, a new upload happened right as I was finishing the script. Let's check it out. From the deep reaches of space, a horror approaches. The town to be victimized, South Park, Colorado. Hi, Chef. Hello, children. Did you hear the news? What news? A big comet is headed our way. It's going to cross paths with the Earth. And when it does, all kind of crazy, spooky stuff is going to happen. Spooky like how? Boogie like you better get your asses indoors, children. I'm not kidding. Our lives are in danger. What the hell is that about? Oh, oh, oh. 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 Turns out video games aren't even safe. The N64 version of the South Park game, which is a real game that it's honestly pretty fun if you check it out, is a host with similar corruption to its other media counterparts. People can encounter this either through the carts of the game being modified and given out, or extremely early Nintendo 64 emulation, which did start in 1998 through Project Unreality. Mind you, Unreality in reality was in no way able to support running any game like that smoothly, but we're taking a bit of a creative liberty here. A huge portion of why I love this ARG is because it's extremely aware of its time period. South Park is something I frequently saw on VHS tapes, and it takes advantage of the media and television that works popular at the time to make something really immersive. Something that should trouble everyone, however, is this maniacal group's ability to manipulate media with possibly supernatural programming abilities and what that means for the rise of the internet. It's the late 90s, the internet was beginning to boom, so God knows what they're going to be able to spread through emails and early dial-up websites with no way to stop them. The internet was kind of a wild west, so such a dangerous group on the forefront of the technological rise is horrifying to behold. I'm happy to report that this ARG is still ongoing. I'm very much excited for new uploads, which come quite fast for how well they're made. I can't wait to see which cartoon child is distorted and which real life child is going to be killed because of it. My coverage doesn't entirely do it justice. Go sub to Beyond Birth and tell him what a good job he's done with everything. The series isn't perfect, mind you. I had to cut a lot of the footage from each upload just to show the clips that aren't just the show with the filter over top. Besides that, I think the series is exceptionally good at building narrative tension and escalating things further and further. The story is able to expand with a traceable series of events meaningfully, which makes it stand pretty head and shoulders above a lot of other series that just don't do that. It isn't completely cryptic. A lot of the text seen on the screen makes sense when you apply it to the context given in future uploads. And for that, I must give this a 4.5 star rating. Bravo, Mr. Birth. It's here where I must stop. There aren't any more uploads to analyze, so I have to patiently wait for more to come. If you've liked anything you've just seen, then go ahead and follow the creator for more. If you've enjoyed my commentary and coverage, well, you know what to do. Subscribe and stay tuned for more weekly uploads. Until then, dear viewers, 
Have a lovely rest of your day.